Hi everyone, Chloe with Love here, and I'm going to be breaking down the last episode of Real Housewives of Orange County, which aired on 12-30-20. And it opens again with Elizabeth having a panic attack and Bronwyn comforting her. And I have to say, Bronwyn does a really, really, really good job. Nothing. <sighs> Okay to tell you it story. wasn't my fault. <laughs> I was just a little girl. From zero to 13, I was raised in this religious environment. My grandmother was the head of the religious cult, and my father was one of the main preachers as well. A young girl, I knew something was wrong with what was going on in this church. I need to move on, and I don't know how, and I feel like I'm you're doing it myself. right now. What do you mean you don't know how? You're doing it right now. I feel like <sighs> I'm really nervous that I just said that. And Liz, one thing she keeps repeating is how she doesn't want to talk about it and she just wants to forget about it, but she's now realizing that she can't do that and that every tear needs to be cried and every emotion needs to be let out or it's going to manifest itself as disease in her body. She doesn't say she knows that, but you can see that the emotions are starting to erupt out of her, which is what happens as we get older. We can't ignore our scripting. We can't ignore what happened to us as children. These things do need to come out. And this is such a good illustration of that. And I found that laughter attracted people to me. It was easier to live in a fantasy world of happiness than live in my reality of depression. So now I have an explanation for why Elizabeth's fake laugh has been so annoying this whole season, because it's such a cover for how she's really feeling. After she expresses herself, she, she also expresses, she still feels scared, she still feels vulnerable. And that's such an important point because, um, first of all, this is gonna be a long road for Elizabeth. This isn't gonna be like, oh, I mentioned it and now I'm okay. This is gonna be taking some time for her to get over everything that has happened or to process everything that's happened. Because as we know, you never really get over it but you stop being as triggered by it. It doesn't control you as much once it's been processed. So that's the journey that Elizabeth is really embarking on now. And um, we as women often, especially if we've been abused, we don't feel comfortable being vulnerable. And that's one thing that will take time to desensitize to being vulnerable. And it's so important to be able to be vulnerable because only when we're vulnerable are we open to new ways of being and loving. Um, so she talks a lot about her early years and her years specifically from zero to 13. And this fits very well with what Freud postulated, which was that zero to 12 pretty much sets your personality. And then the rest of your life is kind of getting over what happened from zero to 12. So this is also really well illustrated in Elizabeth's journey. I told my neighbor what was happening inside the church and the FBI came to shut down the church. Day? Yeah, bad. Many situations. Many men? Yeah. That's f horrifying. Because I had guilt that we, that I misplaced everybody. I feel like I, what? I hurt the family by talking. You displaced. Because I was told not to say anything. I was told. So one thing that Elizabeth also expresses is that even though under her father's protection, she was molested many times by many different men, she still feels guilty about turning her, her, her father in and forcing the family to leave the state because the FBI eventually shut down her family's church. Uh, this, also, this echoed what Gina was going through in the prior episode when she felt guilty about testifying against her ex-husband about domestic violence. Um, very often, the victim does feel guilty and the abuser will use that against the victim if they get the opportunity. And this is such another good example that we're seeing on Housewives that it's not the victim's fault. What happened to you is not because of you and who you are. And so it's really important that Elizabeth get this information out there 
and get it on the table so that it can be disabused and so she can carry on with her life without feeling guilty about turning her father into the FBI. Finally, we're seeing that being vulnerable is hard, recovering from addiction is hard, and you know, kudos to both these women on this season because they're being really brave and Bronwynski is getting sober on TV and in Elizabeth's case, finally telling the truth about her background. Um, and I have nothing but admiration for this kind of courage. And this is really what we need to see in all people. We would live in such a better world if all of us really attended to our spiritual work. So thank you, Elizabeth and Bronwyn, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.